Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. We have a review for The Hunger Games Mocking Jay Part 2. Uh, I have a special guest joining me. She is Miss Netflix Knightley. She, her husband, and I went to go see the movie on opening weekend. Uh, we all enjoyed the movie, but we all have uh, different opinions of it. Now, her husband won't be joining us for this uh, review. And there's not really much room in the screen for a for third person anyway. But it works out well because she's a big fan of the series. She's read the books and she's seen the movies uh, several times where I am a very casual fan. I barely know the names or anything. So uh, we have an interesting discussion about The Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 2. I give the movie uh, A-. minus. Uh, Miss Netflix Knightley, what do you give the movie? Well, I give the movie a B-. minus. Okay, so uh, doing things a little differently. Uh, if you don't know this story by now, then I'm not going to waste time telling you. I don't want her to waste time telling you. It's the fourth movie of the franchise, and if you're coming in at the end of a franchise, that's on you, okay? So we're just going to dive right into what we liked and what we didn't like about the movie. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Miss Netflix. I mean, I've been talking long enough. Uh, what are some of the things you liked about it? Well, I liked the movie really overall. Um, it was it was a good movie. It kept me on my seat. Um, I would really, you know, when we started off, it was, it kind of took on a little slower than I would like. Mm -hmm. But it was it was it was really interest it was really really interesting. And when they got to the capital, they they were looking for all the bombs, and it threw me off guard when the uh, Corporal Jackson, I believe it was, he got blown up and turned the reins over to Katniss. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then at the end of the movie, I really liked is when... Is that different from what happens in the story, or do you remember? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I read the book a long time ago. Ah, okay. But... Um, so much for being an expert. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but um, when Peter, at the very end, when Peter Malark, mm -hmm. um, he, moved, he moved back to District um, 12 with Katniss, to live with Katniss and support Katniss. And it was, I just really liked it how, you know, he knew that he had what we call PTSD, mm -hmm. um, that he lived with her because she, she knew the effects of the, the tracker jacker venom because she had, she had been selling with tracker jacker. Okay, and, now, now you just restored your uh, expert crit. <laughs> yes. So when she was stung by the cracker jack in the first movie, she she hallucinated. She had to realize what was real and what was fake. Mm -hmm. And because Peter had finally come to the realization that Katniss is not out to kill her, as the capital had said, but altogether she was there to help him and guide him. So when he had one of his moments where he didn't think things were real, she could say, okay, this is not real. This is what's actually going on. And it kind of, when they came together, it was kind of like, you know, the ending of a love story. It was like, I was really, really pleased with that. I mean, even though I really wanted Gail in the beginning, Gail and Katniss to hook up and be like, oh, yeah, babies. But I was really, really happy at the very end when Peter and... Um, Gail and Katniss? Oh, well, oh, that's the other guy. That's Gail's the other, other guy. guy. But, yeah, yeah when Peter See, and Katniss that, that's got I together... Call him, I, I call him the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course, you know, Peter and Kat, and Peter and Kenneth got together. I mean, I really, really liked it. That was something I really liked, and it was kind of like an awe moment, especially when they had their babies. Look, they were so cute. Uh, yeah, I so. Well, uh, I enjoy it overall. Uh, I don't have too many good points, not because it wasn't good. It's just that uh, I said it's, it's the fourth movie, so if you've been on board this whole time, uh, there's nothing in this movie that really is radically different from the formula and uh, that they've done in the past three movies. So it's not like they throw, suddenly throw a giant curveball with uh, the direction or the action or the uh, storylines or anything like that. So that's why I only just have the, the two good points I want to mention. First of all, Donald Sutherland, uh, President uh, Snow. Love that man. He is perfect. He's not in many scenes in this movie, but when he's on camera, you just... Well, I just absolutely love it. it. Talk about perfect casting. That's one of the rare instances where it's absolutely perfect casting. Uh, if I were to watch this on DVD, I would probably just jump to all of his scenes. That's because he'll excellently. He looks amazing. He speaks amazingly. His uh, outfits are amazing. I mean, like he does that perfect balance of being authoritative and scary 
without being viciously or maniacal. It's like he is constantly thinking, constantly calculating, constantly planning and plotting. I love Donald Sutherland. The other thing I liked, which I actually didn't like at first, but then I decided, well, it's kind of a good thing. Uh, you know, the main part of this the story is that uh, Katniss, well, the rebellion is about to take the capital, but Katniss, she wants to make sure that President Snow dies. So uh, she wants to make sure uh, to kill her herself. So what was supposed to be a propaganda mission turns out into a, a personal vendetta uh, mission to assassinate President Snow, which would have been fine, but it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, she, she basically puts her whole unit at risk because it, you need that person, that special device to find the pod. So it's like first it, she and Gail plan on stealing the pod to go off on their own, which means that the rest of the squad would be just stuck without a pod, and I guess we'd have to hopefully go back track to where their base was and not get caught. Uh, but even going forward, with the uh, device, they, they still wind up uh, almost getting uh, killed by some of the pods, and some of them do get killed by the pods. I mean, I do love those pods. There are some very interesting pod traps and everything like that. That's uh, really cool. But by the time she and Gail get to the Capitol, uh, right before, um, you know, there's the big twist or ending or a well, not necessarily twist but the big development that uh, there was that last bit of bombing of the innocent uh, children and Snow winds up getting captured anyway by the resistance so it basically means Katniss's little pr private mission was pointless you know she put her squad at risk she put Gail at risk she put uh, Peter at risk for this person of vendetta and winds up not affecting anything at all like nothing she did in her propaganda or uh, in the side mission affected anything other than the, the political aspirations of both parties saying, oh, well, well, I think she's dead. So first we want to put, put out a thing like, oh, she's dead. She was just some crazy girl that to try to rebel. And this is what happens when you go against us. And then the countermeasure, no, she's a martyr. She'll always uh, be our uh, champion. And I'm thinking, okay, I applaud how fast you got this up, but shouldn't you make sure she's dead? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so at first I was like, well, what's the whole point of this story or movie or side thing if it's going to wind up being nothing? But then again, they, they take this movie from a full one book into cut it in a half. So maybe if it was actually one story condensed, it might have been so bad. But yeah, I, got, I kind of felt upset about that. But then I realized that's life. You know, sometimes you go out to do something and uh, to affect change and what you do doesn't matter, does it? So it was kind of good that her side mission just wound up costing all of her friends and her squad mates and almost her life, and she wound up uh, absolutely nothing for, to show for it. So that's why I guess it's a good comment. All right, uh, so with that said, let's talk about some of the negatives, all right? What are some of the things you did like, like or disappointed about our movie here? There was not enough battle scenes, you know? It, well, they were coming through the... Um the pod area, I mean, it was just they missed a pod, they got a pod, and it, something happened. And it's like, I would have really liked a lot better if there was, you know, more like hand-to-hand -hand combat, sort of like they did on in the original, you know, Hunger Games, you know, where they were fighting for each other. You know, it was just kind of there. But, on the other hand, I was on the edge of my seat during the scenes there were. Uh, so, that, that's it. Also, because you kept, um, before we recorded this, we were discussing what uh, we might talk about. And she kept saying, like, she wanted more action. We were actually like, what do you mean more action? There's, there's giant no, machine there's, guns that pop yeah, out of nowhere. Up, there's these uh, super fast frying, uh, you know, uh, sun things in the subway with saws later in the subway. So, like, and then the, the, the monsters we'll get to in a moment. But it's like, what do you mean more action? So, so you would have preferred uh, a more uh, humanoid battle sequences or yeah, combat the, personal as opposed to finding automated systems. Is that where what like saying? every five or six steps they had to be like, oh, we got to walk to the side because it's going to be some, it's something, if we don't, something's going to happen. Oh, wait, now because we we have to go there, now we got to throw a pod. Mm -hmm. We got we to throw something to detonate this pod. And it's like, okay, well, why couldn't, you know, something, you know, two things pop up, you know, or have like a hidden, one of the white guys that run around have them run around, you know, and they have to kill the peacekeepers or maybe some other, the people from the capital that, that were trying to save the capital, mm -hmm. being there trying to, trying to fight with, you know, them, actually other humans being there, mm -hmm. you know, because otherwise it's just the capital fighting against itself. It's not anybody in the people. 
But there were people that were against Katniss and yeah. um, Gail and, uh, that were against the rebellion. Yeah, that and, were, the, and I will say there was a lot of pause when I understand this is a future and the technology is different, but I just tell myself, like, not only did you guys get this stuff set up, but like what happens when the war is over? Who Who is responsible for deactivating this? So this is and they have switch out to, right, yeah. right, It's like, uh, and they said like, all citizens report to uh, the Capitol Mansion. Uh, so it's okay with well, the pods to the mansion should be turned off. But you gotta imagine, there gotta be one or two people that just wandered out about, maybe they were drunk, maybe they were uh, uh, homeless, maybe they were just uh, getting out some fresh air or to get to take a smoke and then like, you light the smoke and next thing you know, boom. boom. Well, about the one, that one lady they went to, um, to go underground, mm -hmm. to get the, the hiding set before they went to the Capitol. Yeah. Um, it was, what's her name? It was the cat lady. The right? cat, the cat lady, Lynx, yeah. Lynx or Miss Lynx, yeah, I think that's her name. No, it wasn't her name. I just made that up. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but um, who who was on her side? She was right in the middle of the pods. She was in the middle of the pods. Hmm. So what if she like she could have been blown up by walking outside her house? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, and then how does she go get food because that you know she can't yeah. leave her house because she get blown up. Yeah. So I mean, if there would have been more, you know, maybe. They put like people that would volunteer for the capital to, to you know to fight for the capital mm -hmm. out there, and there may be since be some some combat that would have been like really really cool. One thing that we also have a split uh, agreement on is the sewer scene. Uh, now I enjoyed the sewer scene as a scene and as an action sequence, but I didn't like it because it's like like as much as I love zombies, that's all that reminded me of zombies because I watch a lot of the, the Walking Dead. I watched a lot of other zombie things, so I said, and of course, video games, every other yeah. video game's a zombie mode, horror modes uh, version. So it was like, oh, great. And I found yet another way to toss zombies into a. Uh, and they weren't this. zombies, they were mutts. They didn't even have eyeballs. Right. right. And, so I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, they're not zombie zombies, but still, they might as well be zombies. I mean, they you know, they attack mercifully, they have no you know, human ca real characteristics, it's just these uh, mindless creatures. That attack in mass and just attack and attack and want to rich me up and shoot your shreds. So and where do know, they get all these things? You know, how do they? You know, yeah, they got a very big lab that works very fast. And right? It's I, like I, I guess the capital just has a giant facility to make all this stuff. And I mean, if if they get the news footage up in what uh, twelve seconds or under a minute after they blow up the. Uh, the, the, the building and assume that Katniss is dead, I guess they Oh, boom! Oh, Katniss is dead! Yay! Yeah. Well, you didn't even go inside to look. Mm -hmm. And the two people that were in there, yeah, they're probably yeah. dead. Yeah. But it's like... I mean, they, that, those could have just been some regular resistance soldiers, which they were, which they were but still, it's like, that could have just been some, some guy. They were, yeah, oh, no, Katniss is... And yes, you saw them on the monitor. I mean, they, they have footage of them running in, into the building, but still, it's like, yeah, confirm they, the death. That, that's just... 101. That's that's warfare. And they probably didn't even turn the cameras back on, you know, for a couple seconds, you know, after the, um, you know, after the 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 hot oil or whatever yeah. it was. I think it was tar. Mm -hmm. Came yeah. in. Took yeah, that was weird. I wasn't sure the tar was alive. Not not like alive, but like but like the way it was animated. It was like, okay, is this some type of mechanical tar? Like uh, T, the T one thousand for Terminator? Like, does it like is it like because it's sort of creeping? And it splashes upward, and it grows and grows and moves and, and copes everything, and then it resided. So like, okay, is this regular tar or is this like T one thousand tar? I, I, well, I mean, I, I guess also would think about that just during the action, but yes, with, with sometimes things are just so bizarre. You just yeah, wonder. well, like in the second, like in the third movie, you know, it was like this fog, you know, that was toxic, mm -hmm. and then there was the blooding rain. It's like you know, where do they, you know, like get this kind of thing? It's just kind of like. Mm -hmm. at yeah, at least is. in the Hunger Games, the Hunger Games is a facility designed to change the weather, to change the, the environment. Yeah. It's like a, it's like the holodeck in Star in Star Trek. You know, it's it's but a this space. Is the world. This yeah. is like they're. This is like where they're from. You yeah. know, exactly. and to produce that much oil, I mean, to just dump around. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like that's well, that's a waste of resources. <laughs> you know, a, it's a waste of resources to kill four it, people, it, it, like five like, people. It, it is like we have to think over this pause. Uh, I don't know. Let's go somewhere with class. Let's go with the uh, boiling oil. Okay, fine. Well, let's make it uh, some type of oil that just goes all over and coats it. Just like oil, it coats and, and it, just it, it climbs. And someone said, yes, do that. <laughs>
Now, is that what makes it uh, uh, well, B minus for you? What's the what's the minus effect? Of, of was that the that? months really? They look more like something that came out of the movie Alien. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not really a fan of the Alien movies. And when I first saw them, it was like, okay, that's mm -hmm. kind of creepy. And they looked like aliens. And so, yes, I was on the edge of my seat with during that scene because that was probably the most action, you know, mm -hmm. that I liked during it. But it was kind of just gave me a strong, you know, alien vibe. And mm -hmm. you kind of knew, like, a lot of the characters was going to die. It, mm -hmm. it really, um, it really kind of killed me when, um, the he, husband? No. Yeah, the husband. The um uh, shoot now I can't remember his name. I've got a mental block. Um, ah, don't worry about it. The husband. Finnick. Yeah, Finnick O'Dare. Oh, no, no. When Finnick O'Dare was killed. Torture she was the expert. <laughs> more, more expert than me. Yeah, Finnick, uh, when Finnick died, I was like, it really disappointed me because he was somebody that I you know, he was besides Katniss, he was probably my second favorite character. Because mm -hmm. he was he was he's been there from the very beginning from you know, from movie three, uh, two, three, and, you know, wait, yeah, two, three, and four. He's he was he's been in all three of those movies, and I've really enjoyed his acting. So mm -hmm. I I had to give the movie a B minus because mm -hmm. of the alien scene. Well, I will say this: uh, my ratings are uh, based much as how much I enjoyed it. So I enjoyed this movie uh, much more than I enjoyed the second movie, and I liked the conclusion overall. So. Most of the things that makes it a minus are just minor things that uh, I was slightly disappointed or would have preferred differently. For instance, uh, in the trailers and the commercials, there's this shot of Katniss. She's all dressed in black and she's walking into the Capitol. She's walking and walking and walking and then a crowd of people come behind her. Now, in the context of the movie, it was uh, cool and it made sense and, you know, it was wonderful. But when I'm watching the trailers, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this woman's going to walk right up. Public enemy number one is going to walk right She ain't going to just walk right up and, sit and, and talk crap. You know, no, she, she, she really going to walk right up, public enemy number one, walk right into the heart of the Capitol, and then, oh, everyone's going to come back up. So I was kind of hoping for something like that. Uh, but, you know, so what happens in the movie is fine. It does make sense, you know, but as, but it was just slightly disappointed that I was hoping for one thing. And what I got made sense, but you know, I was just, oh man, I, I was hoping she was just gonna roll up on in, in the middle of the floor. Like, here I am, here I am, still right here, you know. Uh, another thing, I was confused why did Katniss dump Gail? Because Gail comes in and he says, uh, he says, like, did you know about the plan to bomb the, uh, the kids? And, I, and he said he doesn't know or not sure or anything, but he's like, I know that I was supposed to protect your family. And this is like, goodbye. And it's like, that's it. And I'm thinking to myself, what? Even if he knew he was with well, you. Well, Gail was on the, was, was on the original um, uh, rebellion team. He was on the military. He was the original soldier. Okay. And he probably knew that they were going to bomb the Capitol. He, okay. he probably knew that. And... He probably, um, you know, had recruited some of the people to help after the bombing, mm -hmm. which would, would have been Prim, because, you know, Prim was there. They don't come out and say it. Well, well, but, Pr but, but Prim was part of the relief force, not the attacking yes, force. Yes, she, beca because... So you wouldn't tell the relief force. You, you wouldn't tell the relief, hey, guys, we're going to uh, see you to death. Yeah, but the, the, the delayed around, bombing... Unless you're on Kayla or something. The, de like the delayed bombing mm -hmm. was there. It doesn't really say in the movie that um, it was pre it was President Coin, which is the um, the leader of the president of District Thirteen. Gail was with Katniss, so even if he knew about it, there was no way to warn uh, no. Prim. And for what I can tell, he probably he probably didn't know that Prim would be part of the detail. Maybe so he, he might have known the plan. But he might not have even known to say, hey, Prim, you know, you might want to take the, uh, was, was, my fact, was Prim ever in the relief before this movie? I think she signed up for it in the second movie. She did, she'd sign up for the relief. But, I mean, did we ever see her as a relief officer, like in the previous, like in, in number Not three? Not as a relief officer, but she was, she would help to care the sick. She was mm -hmm. training to become a doctor. Right, so she was in training. Yes. Right. So he doesn't necessarily know she'll be part of the detail. So, you know, anyway, so it's like, 
I just was really confused that you say like, hey, this guy's been with you this whole time. He's been with you despite the fact you have these growing feelings for this other guy. He's, he's trying to be respectful. He's definitely being loyal. He's putting he's he's literally he's putting his life, his career, and his future on the line for you in many ways. And you just know like, well, maybe you knew something, maybe you didn't about but I'm kicking you to the curb. I, I just didn't like that. I mean, maybe there's a little more detail in the books. Maybe if I rewatch the movie, I'll see that senior firm to in the in maybe one more document. Like but I didn't really, really like it on that front. I just, I don't mind that they broke up. I just don't, I mean, for the reason that I saw it, it didn't make any sense to me. Well, so, I well so. I saw that they broke up, you know, because Gail knew um, President Coyne's plan. Right. But Katniss, oh, don't, don't, uh, Katniss went against President Coyne's plan, and because if if they rebelled against Katniss, they would kill Katniss. And that would be, and you know, and they just had to, um, they just had to go with Katniss because one Katniss was loyal and Katniss was, was the reason for everything. Well, one thing I uh, didn't like, which was probably not, was probably would be barely noticed if this was on the whole story, but since it was split in two, uh, there's a moment when uh, President Coyne is getting suspicious of Katniss, and like Katniss is supposed to do one thing, where Katniss sneaks off to join the front lines, and President Coyne is like, "Man, that's ridiculous. That's uh, borderline insubordination." Now, uh, the F Philip Seymour Hoffman character, he sort of like gives this wink, like you know, like he's not surprised that this happened. Being insubordinate is pretty much the whole platform of your rebellion. You rebel against the authority, you rebel against the capital. That's why, that's why she liked Katniss to begin because she was rebellion. But Katniss was crossing the line of her thing. She was getting more power than President Coyne wanted. President Coyne wanted, wanted all the power. Uh, if you hired the, the cookie monster uh, and you ran a, a bakery, and all of a sudden you're surprised that he starts eating up all your cookies. It's like, he's the cookie monster. That's what he does. He's cookies. So you, you, you require this young lady who's been rebellious against the Capitol and President Snow and, uh, and doing things, even going off script. You know, they, first they try to have her do things scripted, but then uh, she starts doing things from the heart. Uh, she did things from the heart after she won the Hunger Games and she was supposed to read from the thing, but went off script. She didn't. What, huh? Uh, yeah, I know. She didn't. Yeah, she actually didn't read it, and she they actually she actually started getting in trouble for it. Yeah, and, and um, then uh, and then when they tried to do the propaganda stuff, they wanted to do her do scripts and posing with the things, and they said no, let's have her do it out and about in uh in the media and in, in raw motion. So it's like it's what she does. She's a she's a defiant gal. So why are you so surprised that she's also defying it? It's it, it, it's that should have been written better. But the big reason. Why this gets a minus out of all that other stuff? The big reason: the brother what got killed. The brother got killed. It's 2015, and still the brother gets killed. And no, I don't care that a sister wind up being the president of the new alliance, and I don't care that the a wheelchair guy also survived. No, the, the the we're introduced to a handful of new characters and. The one character that's new that we are given any reason to care about is the guy in charge of the uh, the subunit with Katniss. Now I don't mind that he died necessarily. I just but he, but we don't really care about the others. We I don't believe care. he was actually in the set, the third movie. He was. I believe so. I do not recall him. He, uh, I think he was the the because there was a black commander in the, in the third movie. Okay, now I'm going to have to watch that all over again. Nice I, 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 I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But. Right. Oh, well, I had a nice little rant about to happen. But oh, well. <laughs> well, if he is in the third movie, then I apologize. But I don't recall him being in the third movie. I believe that there he's might be in, introduced in this movie. So I am going to continue with my rant because it's my channel. Not feel like ranting. I'm Rant ranting. away. <laughs> I don't uh, like. Okay. Because uh, like... Uh, 
the, we don't care about the, the two the, uh, women that we showed, the, the, the twin sisters of the unit. Yeah, oh, we so. sort of care about the mute guy and the brother because. I, oh, I loved him. I loved him. But the one that we get really concerned about and know is the uh, leader of that group. And he's the first to go. And like I said, it's, it's fun that several of them wind up dying anyway. But when he's the first to go and he's the one that can give control of the pod to Katniss and he's the one like, you know, uh, you know, be, beware of people, don't necessarily trust anybody. He's the one giving advice. He becomes the most important, yet he's the one that perishes first, okay? If he perishes somewhere a time later, I would have been fine with it. And like I said, we do have a, a black female president there. We got the black guy in the wheelchair that survived. That's one reason why I like the second Hunger Games, because they're like, oh, wow, we actually survived. I was amazed by that. But still... I I I I'm not going to give any uh, leeway with this anymore. It's 2015, uh, and yet one of the main uh, sub characters I were introduced to, uh, the minority, the brother, wind up getting killed uh, first. And I just I'm not going to forget that anymore. It's 2015. I'm not going to forget that anymore. Just to uh, recap, uh, the Hunger Games, Mocking Jay, Part Two. I give it a minus and this. I give it a B minus. Please like and subscribe my video. Please subscribe to my channel. I'd like to thank Miss Netflix Nightly for joining me in this endeavor. We will have any partner letters for the people. Enjoy your movies. Enjoy your movies and find inspiration everywhere.